So let's run through the format of today's session. We're going to pack a lot into 30 minutes. I'll kick us off on a taster on why an end-to-end -end view of customer support helps to resolve queries faster and in a more effective way. And then I'm going to hand over to Autumn, who's going to outline why voice needs to be a key part of your e-commerce support strategy. And that's not just her personal view. She's got a boatload of research to back that up with as well. This broadcast is also a celebration of the eDesk of the Air called Partnership. And I'm going to spend about three minutes bringing you through what that interface is going to look like. And finally, we're going to have a, uh, a Q&A session at the end. So please let us know what your, uh, what your questions are, what you uh, think about all the different uh, product en enhancements that we have, any questions that you might have on voice, just let us know. So we're going to get started here on, we want to meet customers where they live. And from an e-commerce perspective, that is all about Amazon. And from a marketplace perspective, the Amazon GMV is about $475 billion per year. And it dwarfs all the other players in the marketplace. So from eBay, Walmart, all of those different other marketplaces that sit there, I think Shopify takes up a lot of we'll say uh, Shopify takes up a lot of the, the mind share in the marketplace, but I would say that it's where e-commerce e vendors really need to figure out where those customers are and how they can actually best get in touch with them. Shopify's GMV is around $42 billion per year. And that I think is, they take up that mind share, but they really don't have that range of marketplace sellers, the range of marketplace customers that are there. So now that we know where our customers live, we want to figure out how they want to get in touch with us. So Future Commerce is a uh, an e-commerce retailer. They have uh, they surveyed about 750 online shoppers in the U.S. earlier this year, and they asked them what their preferred method of, of contact was with e-commerce sellers and merchants. The thing that jumped out to us from Lidas perspective was. We focus on email, we focus on chat, chatbot, social media integrations, but we also know that voice is a huge part of that customer support success strategy. And that's where we kind of are figuring out that we wanted to really go into it and have a great integration with Aircall because voice is such a massive part of the overall experience. You can't be single threaded when it comes to your customer support strategy. It can't be just one email, 24 hour response time. You have to combine all of these different elements to provide a great customer experience for your customers. And when we look at all of these elements together, this is where e-commerce merchants need to provide all of these services together in one e-commerce help desk. And that's what we're really all about here at eDesk. So when we looked at the voice gap that we had in our proposition, we wanted to figure out who are the best people to partner with. And that's where Aircall come in. And now I'm gonna hand you over to Autumn and she's gonna bring you through some of that key e-commerce voice research and to show why voice is so pivotal to overall e-commerce support. Thanks very much, Sean. So uh, yeah, ask the question in the, uh, in the chat here, just what folks prefer. I'm seeing email, phone majority of the time, online chat, chat for small things, phone for complicated issues. So yeah, definitely having uh, the variety of choices is, is it seems like what everybody's after. And that's right in line with the research that uh, we've done over here at Aircall. So uh, just to give you guys a sense of what the, the research I'm pulling from is, is uh, where it's coming from. So we actually surveyed about 6,000 different e-commerce shoppers across a variety of industries um, and across six different countries. Um, so a, a variety of, of geographies as well represented here. And we asked them a number of questions. Uh, we also did a lot of the research, you know, based on what other uh, researchers had done regarding e-commerce in the space. And so, you know, coming into the year like 2021 and coming out of a year like 2020, the first question we wanted to ask were, was, you know, how have online shopping changes uh, or how have uh, online shopping habits rather changed uh, over the past year or so? So the first question that we asked is, 
are you shopping online, uh, you know, the same amount as before, more than before, less than before? Uh, and what we got in, in terms of an answer is probably what you would expect, right? Right in line with what we're seeing happening uh, across e-commerce uh, in a variety of categories and across a number of research uh, articles is that across North America and Europe, people are mostly shopping more than before. We've got 45% of folks in North America and 50% of folks uh, out of Europe who are saying that they're shopping uh, online more than ever. But you know, interestingly enough, we wonder whether that actually translates into more customer service interactions, right? So we know that folks that maybe previously were shopping more brick and mortar have had to come online, but are they actually going and seeking out some, you know, answers to their questions, or are they having issues that they're needing to get in contact with e-commerce brands about? The answer that we got from that question is that 52% of respondents actually did seek out customer service uh, over the past six months, regardless of channel. Um, so the majority of the folks that we did uh, interview for this survey. We also found that uh, this is actually really important and customer service is a really important part of a buying process and of remaining a customer of an e-commerce brand. Um, some of the research that we actually got from Microsoft showed us that 90% of Americans actually consider customer service to be not one of, but the deciding factor as to whether to do business with an organization. So clearly a really, really important part of the, uh, the customer service. Uh, customer service is a cr critical part of the buying uh, process and choosing which e-commerce brands to, to service or to work with. So why else is, is customer service important, right? We asked a couple more questions to this end. So first thing that we wanted to look at is, you know, what are you likely to do or how are you likely to react if you have what you consider to be a positive customer service interaction, uh, right? So we, we asked folks what they're likely to do. And the most common answers we got, 55% of folks said that they would continue purchasing with a brand. That kind of goes without saying, and that's fantastic. That means that, you know, potentially one-time customers becoming uh, long-time customers. Uh, customers and fo folks who want to use your product uh, or, you know, purchase from your brand over and over again. Uh, more importantly than that, though, we see that 44% of folks said that they'd actually recommend the brand to close personal contacts. Uh, I know this is how I personally buy. I feel like nowadays this is the way that a lot of folks uh, are more most likely to actually support our brand, right? Advertisements don't work as well for us anymore, but what works really well is somebody you trust telling you uh, that, you know, some, they had a positive experience. Uh, with an organization that's going to make you likely to start to work with that brand or purchase from that brand uh, and they even might pro post a positive review online right which that's a more trustworthy version uh, of an advertisement folks who are not being paid to talk you know positively about your brand are going online and saying what a positive experience they had so that other folks uh, are likely to to look at your brand as well uh, but then we had to look at the other side right so that's what you do when a good customer service interaction happens what happens when you have a negative customer service interaction right the number one answer, 50% of folks said that they stopped buying the brand, right? That, they, that means that all of the time, energy, and effort that you and your business put into acquiring that customer in the first place, uh, it means it's all going to waste. As soon as they've had that negative interaction, they're not going to be purchasing from your brand again. And that's obviously a big loss uh, for your organization. Not only that, but they're actually more likely to share the negative experience than they are to share the positive experience. We only saw 44% of people who would share with close personal contacts uh, you know, that positive interaction and 46% of people would share that negative experience. Uh, and if you hear that from someone, you know, those are all the, the people who are not going to be purchasing from your brand again, more than likely. Um, they're also 35% of people said that they're likely to actually switch to a competitor. And who's to say, you know, if they have a positive customer service interaction with that competitor of yours, then they might actually, you know, post a review, tell their friends about that brand. And that's even more customers that you've lost uh, the ability to reach and, and who are going to actually give your brand a try. So clearly there's a lot at stake when it comes to making those positive customer service uh, interactions happen one way or another. And so then the question becomes, you know, what can you and your business and your brand actually do to ensure that you're providing a good or positive customer service experience for your organization? So we asked this question point blank to the people we surveyed, you know, what makes a good customer service to you? Um, some of the answers that we saw fairly often were knowing the history of your of your organization. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about integrations later, but I think from the voice channel, they don't want to, you know, somebody to pick up the phone and not to know who they are, not to know their history with the business and not to be able to access any of the information about them. Right. Knowing that history is going to be critical. Uh, expert knowledge and somebody who actually does understand the brand is also something we saw come up a good amount. 
Even more commonly than that, we saw that people want a friendly and empathetic voice or, or chat or you know, even someone over email to kind of have that tone of friendliness and being empathetic to the problem that they're having. And in addition, even higher, more folks wanted a fast response, right? They want somebody to get back to them sooner rather than later. They don't want to spend hours waiting to get an email back or days even to get an email back or, or a chat back or getting, a, getting through on the phone line. Um, but the highest and the most important element of goods customer service across the board, across geographies and industries was resolution in that very first interaction, right? The most important thing to customers and what makes that positive experience one that they're going to share with other folks is can you solve their problem and can you solve it quickly? Can you solve it without having to involve you know, multiple different people and it's going to take this amount of time to you know, get into this system and do this and that thing? Having everything all together in one place for your customer service reps is what's going to enable them to have that resolution within that first interaction. And so you start thinking about what is the most effective medium to actually uh, resolve that customer issue within that first interaction. We asked what is the most effective customer service option and asked customers to basically rank uh, one through 10 different channels for how effective uh, they find these channels to be. And across the board, what we found was that when it comes to effectiveness and the ability to actually um, you know, resolve that customer service issue within that first interaction, phone was consistently ranked between one and four more often than all of the other channels. So you see emails not far behind and chats not be far behind that. But what we find is that at the end of the day, the most important thing for customer service and the most important thing that customers are going to be looking to your business to provide when they reach out to you is to be acknowledged with the issue that they're having and to have that issue resolved uh, as quickly as possible. That's what's going to keep them satisfied. And that's what the voice uh, platform, you know, makes available. Uh, I saw someone in the chat, you know, talk about how, you know, for more uh, long-term or complicated issues, the phone is a better option. And, and we find that that's true across the board. We actually did some research a couple of years ago that showed that, you know, urgent customer issues for whatever reason, you know, when we asked them about customer issues, which, which channel are you most likely to use first? Uh, the, the answers were all across the board, but when we asked about an urgent issue, everyone said phone is the, the channel that they most likely use. And that's because, you know, a phone is one conversation. It's one uh, element after reaching out that you don't expect to have to follow up on. You know, there comes a time and a place for waiting for an email back or waiting for somebody to respond to your chat message. But when an issue needs to be solved effectively and efficiently, and you need to get it done with one interaction with the brand, that's where phone comes in. And that's where your business is going to have the opportunity to provide that positive experience. Uh, so with that, hopefully I've given folks a little bit of a, of a taste of the research that Aircall has done recently into e-commerce and kind of where uh, the voice channel fits into that. Um, but I will pass it back over to Sean to talk about how eDesk and Aircall together are going to enable customer support and service teams to provide that positive customer experience with the voice channel. Thanks, Autumn. I love that kind of flow through from the research we showed from Future Commerce around how voice is the, that preferred channel and you're seeing that as well in your research around phone and email really uh, allowing customers to have that first contact resolution which is absolutely crucial and especially when it's an urgent issue people need to get in front of and speak to somebody even to almost feel like they have that ability to have that control over the situation they shoot an email off they're not sure what the sla is they don't know how long that response is going to come in right. i think that's just a crucial crucial element of it and uh, i love to see how those different types of research come together on a, on a similar theme i think you know, as i outlined a little bit earlier in the broadcast this is a celebration of our newest e-disc integration with Aircall. It's something that our customers have been asking for really for quite some time. And when we looked at the market and the best place voice provider in the market, we wanted a partner who was gonna match our desire and our passion for great customer support and also great looking software, truth be told. And we found that in Aircall. And now I'm gonna show you what that integration looks like from an eDesk perspective. Um, you'll see here from, from the video, this is the eDesk interface that hopefully many of you on the call will be very, very familiar with. So this is the to-do section where we open up the voice integrations. Uh, because this is a first-time connection for Aircall, you click on that phone icon and it brings you through to the eDesk App Store. From this point, you're able to get through and go to the App Store and install the app. So you can see here all the details, the benefits of using the Aircall app, the benefits of integrating with eDesk are all here. 
So it's at this point here that you want to connect Aircall to eDesk and continue into Aircall by using that Amazon account in this instance. I talked a little bit earlier about how important Amazon is in the broader ecosystem. The bulk of the volume that we see from a ticket perspective really come through Amazon. So when we pick our Amazon account, this brings us into signing into your specific Aircall account. We're assuming for this customer that they're already, uh, uh, they've already made the right decision and they're an Aircall customer. So we're going to authorize eDesk to get access to those Aircall calls. At this point, we're going to connect the relevant number. For the purposes of this demo, it's going to be the test account. And from this point on, you're going to be able to uh, associate all of your team members and put them in automatically here. And I think this is one of the key pieces that is part of the integration as well as that agent authorization section that you can pull all the relevant agents in that need to have voice access and those agents who look after voice calls. So this is your air call dashboard. As you can see, there are no calls as of yet as we've just started the integration. So this is at the point where um, in the eDesk product line where calls come through, you can see that now a call is coming through from a customer called John Misty. And we know the customer name as it's in our directory, but during the call, as we're speaking to the customer, we want to confirm their email address. And we also want to attach that order number and the customer number that's there. So when we enter their email address here, this is again, ties back to multi-channel support. This customer is calling in over the phone, but when we want to send follow-up information, follow-up details on their order, we want to have their email address so we can send that information back to them. When we add the order number here, what this will do is this is going to auto-populate the order details from any of the marketplaces or web stores, which we outlined earlier, Amazon, eBay, Walmart, Shopify, wherever you sell, eDesk connects to it. And you can also add notes to the account. So the next time a customer gets in touch, if that's by email, voice, SMS, you're going to have a record of that contact. And back to what we talked about earlier on, it's so crucial to have that multi-channel approach, the full view of the customer. In this instance, he had a damaged book, and we're going to send him a refund and initiate that refund for him. So these integrations, they're all about making customer support agents' lives easier and we put such a focus on integrations here at eDesk, and I know Aircall absolutely think the same way and they have the same view of the world. And I think that's why this partnership really works. You've got high performance software with great usability and combining those two things together, it's a win for agents, for our joint customers who are on the call today. And it's also a win for eDesk and for Aircall, truth be told. Agents can also make outbound calls to customers, follow up on queries with orders, and really focus on delighting customers day after day. So we've shown you what a lot of you are gonna be coming here to see, which is the research that we promised, which is the air call demo, but we wanna to get to some questions. Uh, and before I do, I have one request. So as we get into the final slide here on the deck, I want you to uh, scan the QR code with your QR reader. And that is going to allow you to follow eDesk on social uh, across LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And I also, because we have Autumn on the call and it's really, really important, we want you to check out aircall.io, follow them on LinkedIn and on Twitter for all of their great content. So Autumn, I'm going to be real selfish here and I'm going to ask one or two of my own questions before I bring in the questions from the audience. We know that customers today, they're so sophisticated in their e-commerce knowledge and they don't just pick up the phone for no reason. In your experience, at what point do customers want to make that call? Yeah, no, definitely. That's a, a great question and, and something I uh, alluded to earlier. I think uh, making that call oftentimes, it, it comes down to a number of different things, right? So, so on the one hand, what we've seen in the research that we've done previously is that uh, the likelihood that a customer is going to reach out uh, via phone or via a particular channel on that first attempt, it really is actually a generational difference. So uh, when we looked at, you know, of, our, of the people we surveyed, when we looked at folks who identified as um, baby boomers or uh, folks who identified as um you know, parts of the older generation, those folks tended to actually uh, prefer the phone, right? I think they prefer having an actual human on the phone, um, somebody that they can talk to directly. Whereas when we look specifically at millennials and Gen Z, uh, what we saw was that those folks would prefer chat or email, 
uh, over the voice channel. But again, uh, what we saw consistently across uh, a variety of different uh, generations is that when that request becomes quote unquote urgent or something that the customer considers to be urgent, that's when the voice channel tends to rise to the number one or most likely channel uh, that somebody will use. Uh, because that issue is urgent, I think they just prefer to have uh, some live person on the phone that they can get all of their questions answered at once and know that their issue is going to be resolved by the end of that conversation. Yeah, I love that. I'm a geriatric millennial myself, so <laughs> I probably lean more towards the boomer and the Generation X as regards picking up the phone, yep. something I like to do. We've got a couple of questions here from the audience as well. Um, Pravalika is asking, do you need to have an air call account? And the answer is yes. For EDES customers, uh, you can go and sign up at aircall.io. And then work, once you have uh, accounts for both pieces of software, you can just set up the integration just like I showed you. Um, Mark Vesters, Autumn is asking a question here. Can we opt into only certain features of Aircall? Like if we want the text feature, but not the live calls perhaps? So great question, Mark. To be honest with you, uh, Aircall is not going to be the best fit if SMS only is what you're looking for. Um, that telephony element is pretty pretty critical to what the platform makes available. Um, but happy to, uh, to share more on like kind of the options that we can provide via SMS. Uh, feel free to get in contact with me and I'll, I'll drop uh, my, my email into the chat as well if you have uh, follow-up questions on that. Love it. I have a really nice question here, but uh, from Matt to John, and it's around, he's asking a question specifically around eDesk. So he sells on eBay, Amazon, Walmart, Shopify. Does setting this up work for all of these marketplaces at once? And the answer is yes, it does. Once you have all of those channels set up from an eDesk perspective, all of those questions and uh, all of those queries and tickets all come into the one eDesk hub. Autumn, I've been such a fan of the air call growth story this year, and it's been a huge year for you. What's been the secret to your growth and your newfound unicorn status? No, thank you very much for, uh, for asking, Sean. I think, um, yeah, it's been a, a big year for growth for us. I think there's a few different answers to your question. Um, you know, one of the things that we see in e-commerce, interestingly enough, that also applies to the voice channel in particular, is that uh, we have for a long time, you know, analysts have predicted that e-commerce would take over slowly but surely the, the brick and mortar market. Um, but that was accelerated last year when COVID-19 forced folks to stop shopping brick and mortar, to spend more time at home and to kind of transition to online shopping a little bit faster. Well, we saw the same thing happen across a number of industries and especially in e-commerce. Um, we saw folks actually... Uh, needing to use a, a telephony system that integrates with their core systems of record. We saw folks that historically had depended on a desk phone that physically sat on their office desk uh, need to transition to something that, you know, they didn't need to go into the office to access. And so uh, that's one of the things that I would definitely say accelerated our growth a little bit. But, you know, the other thing that makes Aircall such a, a beneficial tool for so many organizations is, you know, you've heard me say this a million times, I'm sure you're tired of hearing it at this point, but it is our integrations, right? Uh, I think anyone can create a voice tool and having a voice tool that actually, uh, you know, has somebody come in and, and, you know, the call doesn't drop, uh, you can hear clearly the person on the other side of the line, and, you know, you can follow up as you need to after the call is over. Those things are good, and they're definitely things that businesses need, but we consider them to be just the first step of having a voice platform, right? Having all of those things that make the platform itself good. I think what, what really makes Aircall kind of a game-changing platform for so many brands and organizations is our ability to connect into systems and applications that customers are already using, right? And so that's going to enable their customer support reps to actually see uh, information before they start a call or before a call is even initiated from other systems and applications and the history overall that that customer has with their business. And then after the call, it's going to mean that, you know, once they hang up the phone, information from that call is still accessible, right? They can still access, um, you know, recordings of air call. They can still go in and, and look at, you know, the notes that were taken and all of that information uh, is going to be stored in the systems and record that they hold dear as well. So I think those are the things that make uh, Aircall's growth, uh, made our growth accelerate over the past years and just building out integrations with great platforms like eDesk, uh, enabling us to be a, a difference maker for so many organizations as well. Yeah, it's a, fantastic to hear. And I think one of the things that I've been really happy about today, we launched a press release for this launch and to support this broadcast but we've got some great pickup on Yahoo Finance, Tame Bay, loads of other e-commerce publications. 
And at eDesk, we're e-commerce specialists and we kind of look at the world through that lens, right? I know you serve many different segments of the marketplace, but can you tell me a little bit about your growth in e-commerce specifically? Definitely, definitely. So, you know, e-commerce has definitely been a big uh, focus for the organization for a long time. Um, I think part of what I, you know, just spoke to just the uh, unprecedented growth in the e-commerce realm is, is part of the reason that we've seen so much growth in e-commerce, because as those brands, you know, they get developed, they grow, uh, they find the need for customer service and customer support, and they need a voice platform to enable that. Uh, that's part of the growth. Uh, but really, I think as we saw, you know, there's another side to this sudden proliferation of new uh, e-commerce businesses. And that is that, you know, businesses have to work a little bit harder to differentiate themselves as a brand. Um, right. I think, I think businesses, you know, there being so many different options for every niche product or service that an organization or an individual might want to purchase makes it a little bit more difficult for folks. And so, you know, Aircall launched a branding, some branding last year around the, the idea of, you know, enabling, uh, meaningful conversations and, and, we really think that brands that communicate effectively with their customers are the brands that are going to stand out amongst uh, their peers and competitors, right? And, and that's the other thing that we've heard, actually, interestingly enough, from the voice channel. Some of our customers have even told us that, you know, an interaction that began as a customer support or service interaction actually turned into an opportunity for a sale. Or, you know, they thought that folks would only reach out with an issue that they were ha having, but sometimes, you know, they're looking for some advice on which product to buy and how to leverage it. Um, and those opportunities to kind of give a voice to your brand and, and have those conversations directly with your customers, those are, are really invaluable to the organizations that have joined uh, Aircall. And that's, I think, also why we've seen quite a bit of growth uh, in the e-commerce space is our commitment to that voice creation for brands. Yeah, I have a question in here from, uh, from Colin Autumn. It's what's the cost per user of Aircall? Yes, happy to answer that. So we've got two main plans. It depends on where you're located, Colin. I believe you're here in the States. So uh, the dollar amount is going to be $30 per user per month for our professional plan uh, and then $50 per user per month for uh, our, uh, I'm sorry, $30 per user per month for our essentials plan and $50 per user per month for our professional plan. Um, and the difference can be found just right at aircall.io slash pricing. Um, you'll be able to see that per region as well if you're not calling from within the United States. We have a couple of follow-up questions here from, from Mark and uh, from Matt. I think we'll answer those directly via email after this call. We're almost right out about a time. I want to thank everyone on the call for joining this broadcast and for your questions. I want to thank you, Autumn, for taking the time to present with me today. It's been an absolute blast in the preparation and the run-up to this. I've really enjoyed it. So thanks so much to you as well. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. This has been a ton of fun. I love it. So the recording of this session will be sent automatically after this session ends. We will follow up on any outstanding questions that we haven't had a chance to get to as part of the Q&A here, but we really appreciate it. Once again, follow us on, on social, both eDesk and Aircall, and we'd love to connect with you there also, both from a personal and a business perspective. So uh, we look forward to welcoming you to the next broadcast uh, coming pretty shortly. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.